studio in the office of student media at George Mason University. It's the Mason Cable Night Show with Cody Borden. With tonight's guest, student body president, Becca Patin. Here's your host, Cody Borden. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mason Cable Night Show. I'm your host Cody Borden. I'm so excited to bring you a second season of the Mason Cable Night Show and we have a great show right off the bat. The student body president Becca Patine will be joining us in just a little bit but we've been gone for a really long time so in order to reconnect with the Mason Nation we went around with a pack of Oreos for our segment we like to call Good Going George. Hello everybody and welcome to Good Going George. Today we are going to see if people can face the cookie and put an Oreo on their forehead and get it in their mouths using only their facial muscles. One try is fine. I can do it in okay. one. Okay. No, no problem. So, uh, okay. Maybe not one try. <laughs> Go ahead. Got this. Oh, close, close. Oh no! No. Okay. Ah. It's like a lion stalking a prey. Oh, you saw. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Oh. So close. Oh. Got it. Got it. Oh. <laughs> With the flick of the eyelid? Oh. oh my god. You got it. It's okay. So <laughs> there you have it. That's the way the cookie crumbles. We'll be right back with Becca Patine. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mason Cable Night Show. I'm joined now by the student body president. Please welcome Miss Becca Patin. Thanks. Becca, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. How's your semester been so far? It's been good. It feels a little bit like finals week when you're a senior, but yeah. it's good. <laughs> so as the student body president, you obviously have a tremendous amount of responsibility you have to do. So what are the specific roles you play for student government? So officially, I hold three positions. I'm the president of the executive cabinet, which is about 30 members within student government, and they're comprised of secretaries and undersecretaries, and they hold different departments like diversity, um, university life, things like that. I'm also the student representative for the Board of Visitors. Uh, the Board of Visitors meets once a month here at Mason and they discuss upcoming um, legislation, um, programs and things like that and how our university is run. And then I also sit on the Board of Directors for the Alumni Association, which is also really cool because you get to see um, what students do after they graduate from Mason. And apart from that, I just attend events, mm -hmm. um, go where I'm needed if anybody needs me or wants to hear my thoughts on something, if students have concerns. How did those roles really, you mentioned it a little bit before, but how does it like connect you to the student um, community here at Mason? I feel like each of us have our own individual perspective here at Mason. We have things that we're passionate about, that we care about. We have our own majors. We're all here for different reasons. We want different outcomes, but being in this position really teaches you about what the student community as a whole wants and what specific groups need. Um, issues that you never even thought would be affecting our own students or you just, you know, you think, oh, it's a national issue. It's not something that even Mason has a hand in. It really exposes you and it just, it makes you want to do more and to do your best. With any elected position, there's a campaign and with any campaign, there's a platform. Mm -hmm. So what were the key elements of your platform and what are you doing to make those elements come true. Yeah, um, so my vice president and I, Eric Trong, he's also really active oh, yeah. here in student media. Good friends with Eric Trong. We wanted to increase the platform of the organization. We wanted to reach new feats and really um, push our organization to be as involved as, as possible. We really wanted to represent every student and make sure that everyone had a voice at the table and we want to reinvent the way our process works. And some things that we're doing to change that is that we're really seeking out help from a lot of our RSOs and student associations here. We're having round tables upcoming this year um, for a lot of diverse organizations. We are implementing planning committees for events. So Gold Rush, it's not just student government planning it. First of all, we vote. It's not just us planning it. We're really reaching out to other organizations and letting them use their assets to see the change that they want on campus. 
Um, we're doing a lot of things like that, just really trying to leave it open for everyone. Um, something that Eric and I have been doing with our emails is that every opportunity we have, we say yes and we find a way to make it work. If that means you know, sending somebody else because Eric and I can't make it, that's what we do. But we just really want everyone to be heard and we want to do absolutely all we can to make sure that this position is met to the best ability that it can be met at. How long have you been a part of student government? Uh, so I've been in student government since I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. I started out as a senator. I had a lot of things going on and it was definitely something a little bit more on the back burner, but my sophomore year I really stepped up. I accepted the position of admin and finance chairman and that really gave me a, um, a really good all around uh, view of the organization and how it works. Admin and finance basically, mm -hmm. that committee passes all the bills that, we, that are passed through student government and they really have a lot of connections within Mason administration and through that I really found my passion and um, decided to run for president last year so so as a freshman what inspired you to make that first step and join so I, I was actually involved in student government in high school but I didn't really take advantage of it as much as I could have mm -hmm. I just thought of student government as an event planning organization and my freshman year there was a meals tax going on in Fairfax and it was affecting students and I remember a lot of students were really upset by it because um, any meal on campus would be increased by 10 cents and a lot of people were for it and against it, and I didn't really know how I felt about it, but I was so surprised when we had councilmen from Fairfax come in to the Senate and ask our opinions on it because we had an ability to represent our students. And I just remember being so um, in awe of that and in awe of just how much of a role George Mason University has within Fairfax City and within, even in DC, how things are run and um, how they gauge student opinion and things like that. You were enamored with the process and wanted yeah. to make the change. And I, I guess you, people don't even realize how many things student government plays a role in. Uh, if you look on the back of your Mason ID, there's a list of contact information for emergency personnel. It's been used so many different times now. People say all the time that when they call the police, it's because, you know, they only know the number because it's on their Mason ID. That mm -hmm. was a student government um, initiative. Mm -hmm. Medical amnesty at our school was a student government initiative. A lot of uh, Rave Guardian is an application that we introduced to students a couple years ago. Um, it's this app where you can connect with a friend and you can let them know that you got home safely at a party and it tracks you. And that's something that other schools are now utilizing, but we were one of the first to use it. So it's just really amazing like what a platform we have as a university just because of our composition of students and just the potential that we have. And you talked about a little bit about the structure beforehand, but student government is really a large organization. Yes. So talk about like the breakdown of it and like the different branches and how it's um, structured. Sure. So we have three main branches and we have um, kind of two separate boards. We have a d student dining board and they get to kind of have a say in our services council and they talk about, you know, food they'd like to see on campus and things like that. And we also have a parking appeals board, which is comprised all of students. And every single student, when they receive a parking ticket, has the ability to appeal it. And it goes to the parking appeals board. And we get to um, interject on their behalf for parking services for repeals. We have, within student government, within our main organization, we have three branches. We have the executive, kind of a judicial, and a legislative. The legislative is Senate. Um, the exec is a cabinet, and it's comprised of 30 members of secretaries and undersecretaries. And then we have the Elections and Disputes Commission. And the Elections and Disputes Commission, their main um, job is to run elections for student government, but they also oversee any disputes or disagreements between the branches, ways to act, things like that. So if somebody wants to become a part of student government, how can they do that? So right now is actually, we're in election season right now, right in the middle of it. I think we have three more weeks of election meetings. But to join the Senate, um, it's a little bit different than joining the Cabinet or the EDC. If you want to be in the EDC, um, I have interviews for them. They're on a rolling basis. Um, once you're accepted in the EDC, you're accepted for all four years, and you're a commissioner every single year. Um, that's kind of by interview only. Right now for the Senate is what we're really focusing on, and we have candidate meetings in the hub upstairs. They're about 45 minutes to an hour, and they kind of give you a rundown of election rules, how to get involved, how to fill out your packet, and you run a campaign for two weeks, and then um, Mason students vote, and you're able to join after that. Um, and then for cabinet, it's interview and application only. I think right now we have two positions available for cabinet. So we have a pretty full cabinet in the beginning of the year, which is really cool. What are those positions that are open? Um, facilities and identity affairs. One is in the services department and one is in our diversity department. 
So if somebody um, just wants to keep up with what student government is doing and accomplishing throughout the year and semester, um, how can they do that? I would really recommend following our social media, mm -hmm. following our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. A lot of what we share is also just not just opportunities within student government, but university opportunities or initiatives that we're working on that students can really benefit from. Since we have so many positions that are subsets of offices, um, they get a lot of information. We're sometimes the first to know about things. So I would really recommend following us there. We have Senate meetings Thursdays at 4.30 in Merton Hall in the conference room. They're open for all students to utilize if there's ever something that we're discussing that um, students want to speak on, they can come and open panel and uh, express their opinions. We do it all the time and it's, it's really awesome. That's super cool. Yeah. So when you aren't doing your presidential duties, do you have time to keep up with movies? Yes, you I do? do. I'm actually a big movie fan. Okay. I love movies. Do you think you can sum up the plot of a movie in about 10 seconds? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, when we come back, Becca and I are going to play the game Sum It Up. Welcome back to the Mason Cable and I Show. I'm here with the student body president, Becca Patin, and we are about to sum it up. So the goal of this game is to guess a movie title within 10 seconds, but the caveat is you can't say the title of the movie, obviously, character names or actor names. Okay, um, 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 they're in space and they're hanging on for dear life. Oh, the, the, the movie with Sandra Bullock, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know the name of it. Earth Descending or something, right? <gasps> <It's> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Gra it's gravity was gravity. The oh, correct answer. I am in. Wow. Oh, uh, new actress, superhero, brown hair. Oh, uh, Wonder Woman. Yes. Hey, we there got one. Go. Um, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Is this a superhero movie? No. <laughs> Is this a mafia movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Godfather? Did you see it? Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, you got a friend in me. Toy Story. Yeah. Okay. That was a good clue. Um, um, Quentin Tarantino, um, uh, Oh, Hateful Eight? No, older, older, oh. um, uh, oh. say what again? Say I what, one I only know more. the Hateful Eight. It's, it's a cowboy movie though, right? No. Pulp, no? Pulp Fiction. Gen A, Peas and Carrots. <laughs> <laughs> <Four stuff. laughs> um, Dinosaurs. Dinosaur movie. Land Before Time? Um, Spielberg, Dinosaurs. Ah, Jurassic Park. Yes. My first one! <laughs> Bum ba dum ba bum ba da Oh, Indiana Joes. ka -chow. <laughs> <laughs> Becca, thank you so much for being on the show. That was a lot of fun. We got to watch our movies a little bit more or get <laughs> more time, something. Uh, but thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you're interested in joining student government, you can email them at sg at gmu.edu. Or if you just want to stay in touch with them, be sure to follow them on social media as well. Becca, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate it.